In this video, let's take a look at how you use chemistry to determine pool volume. In our last pool volume video, we explained how geometry can be used, but now we'll, we'll show chemistry and this works even for oddly shaped pools. Now the interesting thing about how this works is that there's an inverse relationship between addition and subtraction. This is something that, that we learn in grade school usually, but it can be represented as saying if A plus B equals C, then C minus A equals B, or C minus B equals A. Well, the way that that works in a swimming pool is that if we know in a dosage chart that if we want to get a certain change in alkalinity in a certain size of pool, then that will tell us how much chemical to add. Well, we can rearrange that. If we add a certain amount of chemical to uh, a pool and we get a certain change in alkalinity, we can use that to calculate the volume of the pool. So here's how it works. Step one is that you take a sample of the pool and set it aside. This is your before sample. Then we add an alkalinity changing chemical. This could be acid, liquid or dry acid, could be soda ash or sodium bicarbonate. But you want to add enough to make a noticeable shift in the alkalinity of the pool, maybe 10 to 20 parts per million of change. After you've added the chemical, you need to wait until that chemical has blended thoroughly throughout the pool. With the circulation system running, this is generally going to be somewhere between a half an hour to an hour. After that time period, take a second water sample from the pool. Then, take an alkalinity reading of those two different samples. Now, for this to be of sufficient accuracy, you need to use a test method that is accurate within a couple parts per million. The standard poolside alkalinity test kit is 10 parts per million per drop, and we need to get one or two. So here's how you do it. For this to be accurate enough, we're going to have to change the alkalinity test just a little bit. We're going to take our alkalinity test file and we're going to fill it up to the line and then pour that into a glass. We're going to do that 10 times so we have a water sample that's 10 times the normal amount. Then we're going to use the color indicator and put in 10 times the normal amount of drops. And that way we'll get the color so that we can see the change. After we've done that, we start the test, but since there's 10 times as much sample water, each drop, instead of being 10 parts per million, is now only one part per million. So we can titrate this water and get within one part per million of the alkalinity. After we've taken these two titrations and we have the results from them, we subtract the smaller reading from the larger reading and that will tell us how much the alkalinity in the water changed as a result of the chemical that we added. So that's one piece of information we need in the formula is the alkalinity change. The other piece of information we need is the formula number that goes with the chemical we used. So here's a chart showing the different most common chemicals that we use in the pool industry to change alkalinity. Each one of them has a formula number and you'll want to take note of which number goes with the chemical that you used. After we have these pieces of information, we go to the formula and we can calculate what the pool volume is. We plug in the formula number, we multiply that times the amount of chemical we used in quarts or in pounds. After we have that number, we divide it by the change in alkalinity. The result of that formula will be the pool volume. Here are a couple of examples. If we added five pounds of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda to a swimming pool and the starting alkalinity was 100 and the ending alkalinity was 116, the change was 16 parts per million. The formula number for baking soda or sodium bicarbonate is 71,400. So we plug those into the formula and 71,400 times 5 and then divided by 16 equals 22,000. So we know that we have a 22,000 gallon pool. Here's another example. If we add 2 quarts of acid to a pool 
and the alkalinity drops 12 parts per million from 120 to 108. The formula number for muriatic acid is 125,000. So we multiply the 125,000 times the two quarts and then divide that by 12 and we find out that this is a 21,000 gallon pool. Now actually the volumes in these two examples came out to be 22,312 and a half and 20,833.33 but of course that's too precise for pool use and so we round off to the nearest 1,000 gallons. The margin of error should be around 5%. I hope this is useful to you. It has been to me in order to find out the volume of those strange shaped pools and also not to have to do the geometric formulas. Thanks for watching our video. If it was enjoyable to you, if it was useful to you, don't forget to like or share or subscribe to our videos. Thank you.